it going? Welcome back to Game Gallery, everybody. Boy, it has been a couple of weeks, and I am he who is rather tired, which is okay. <laughs> but for those of you guys that don't know, I am, ooh, yeah, ooh, here we are. Yes, I am Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer. And um, it's good to be here with everybody. How are you guys doing? Um, been doing a whole lot of different stuff. Whole lot of different stuff. Today, I got to give you guys an update because it's, it's beginning to be that time of the year where a lot of my co-hosts are busy with a lot of things. So I've been doing more site upgrades and things like that with that weird effect that you guys just saw. Ha ha ha. Just saw. Um, I've been practicing on the green screen stuff so we can do more green screen effects and all that stuff, specifically during our live broadcasts of games and all that stuff. But now that I've said that, again, I am Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, and I am here today with the misspelled name of my good friend. <laughs> Tis I, Dig Duggernaut. Spelled <laughs> not quite like that, but close <clears throat> enough. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. Um, uh, also, very tired, but uh, very different reasons. Just sick kid means no sleep and fitful sleep when it happens. Yeah, so, that that is yeah. that is a thing. It's, that's, it's a very exhausting yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, man, how you doing today? Oh, man. Again, I too am exhausted. Um, I had to shut down broadcast. For all of last week, because um, I wasn't able to hook up with my co-host, and I don't really think that any of um, any of the folks online that watch our shows. Ooh, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, hang on. Do 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 do. Um, yeah, trying to get that back up. Were, um, we, were we not up? No, we weren't up, but we're up now. Um, but I don't think. Um, Again, nobody watches the beginning of the whole thing, so uh, when this goes back up and all that jazz, it'll be different. But I recorded the good stuff, so that that works. Yeah, cool. um, yeah. so um, as I was saying, um, yeah, it's been um, it's been a thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're still streaming. There we are. There we are. Huzzah! Right. Huzzah! Um. Yeah, what, what was I just talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, the fitful sleep. Because my day job called in with a big project. Oh. And so far with this project, I've put in 40 hours a week, plus, or 40 hours this week, plus three more days. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I've that's why I haven't been, like, communicating with a lot of people. Because when I'm in the warehouse, um, one, the internet signal is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Two, you're, you know, working. Hmm? I would say, two, you're, you know working <laughs> yeah and that's yeah. um that's one of the really big things about the whole working part because yeah. a lot of people are like well i work every day yeah you work at a desk with computer access yeah i am in a cargo container you know the trailer of an 18 wheeler right. lifting boxes which means there's no desk there's no computer right. and if i take out my phone to send a message that means i'm not lifting boxes right because yeah, yeah. Now your your version of what a work day entails and your ability to communicate with other people during it wildly different from a white collar job. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It, it is very blue collar, very yeah. blue collar. Um, but that's okay because I've been able to, of course, upgrade the stuff here at the Wizard's Tower. Yeah. Um, like if you look behind you, you'll see um, you'll see the big pile of fabric and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, that we've been working on. Um, and that's an important thing because um, I'm still working on the merch. So that is a huge thing. You know, I'm starting to think. Actually, I'm pretty sure I got scammed online because uh -oh. I ordered some laser cutting equipment like two months ago. And I'm like, uh, well, I'm glad it was only $40. And um, I started school again. Started oh, school again. Oh, good, good. Um, taking classes on how to make this, this whole endeavor better. Mm. So now I'm like, okay, cool. I used to have nothing but free time. Yeah. And now all I'm doing is working. And I'm like, you know, I must be middle-aged, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is very much a middle-aged thing. So Going to is... Long Beach City College? or hmm? Long Beach City College? No, online classes. Oh, nice. Online classes because, yeah, no, seriously. Like, yeah. I have the openness in my schedule to go, I have a 6 a.m. class. I'm going to go to the 6 a.m. class, then do the whole, yeah. Oh, 6 a.m. classes. Nope, hard pass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I made some rules. Uh I don't know, year or two into my, my college career, I was like, you know what? I'm just, I'm not doing classes before like nine in the morning because then I'm awfully motivated to skip class every time I do that. I'm not doing any classes on Saturday for the exact same reason. Yeah, yeah, that's that's such a thing. And 
one of the things I have most definitely noticed, most definitely noticed, is um, is when when I have the option of working like a real job, yeah. my sleep schedule just goes straight to wacky. Yeah. Because now I'm in your position of sleeping in until nine o'clock is sleeping in. <laughs> nine o'clock. I don't remember the last time I was in bed at nine o'clock. No, I'm saying waking up in the morning at nine o'clock. No, that's what that's I'm saying. In, yeah. Like sleeping in for me, like really sleeping in is like eight. Yeah. Usually it's like if I get to sleep until seven, I'm doing pretty okay in the morning. Yeah. yeah. But see the tough part that I'm dealing with from the magic end of things is, yeah, go ahead, laugh at me. Oh, God, waking up at 9, Puh, luxury, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, you do that when you go to sleep at 4. Yeah. <laughs> That's nah, the that's... 4 to 9 thing. And normally it's not a big deal because I can decide my workload based on my energy level um, plus deadlines. Yeah. But when I'm at the warehouse or mm. painting houses, I don't get to do You're that. You're locked down to their schedule. I'm locked down to their schedule and their yeah. workload. Yep. So if I show up tired, tough. Yep. You if still... I leave tired, tough. Yep. That's uh, that's definitely an adjustment for me, because uh, for me, the, the analogy there is is fatherhood. Like if I'm tired, <laughs> yep. if I don't manage my schedule and my health and everything else, and I have, for example, a sick kid, tough. Yeah. <laughs> that that's my life. You know? Yeah. That that's like, that's that's exactly the whole thing. Like, you know, um, being an adult. It's yeah. like, well, you remember when you were a kid and you had to wake up for school? That was training. Yeah. That's all that was. Um, because once you get, you know, it's, uh, I love how kids have the idea of when I grow up, I'll be able to do whatever I want. I remember those days. What I don't like is when grown ups tell the kids, no, don't work like that. And it's like, well, that's your bitterness. Okay. Yeah. That, that's your bitterness. Yeah. You know, let the kid think they're going to do that. Educate them. But don't crush the hope. And it's like, you know, yeah. when I when I get to be a grown up, I, I'm going to do whatever I want. I know you think that, yeah. honey. Yeah, think that. But <clears throat> you know what? When you're about 15, I'm going to show you something. <laughs> but between now and then, yep, you'll get to do whatever you want. Just have that joy. Keep that happiness. Yeah. That happiness lets me sleep a little later. <laughs> you know. Yeah, there's there's a lot of that where people could be a lot nicer to kids when it comes to like, look, man, life's going to be grinding you down. We're training you for it, but we don't need to be dicks about it. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, yeah exactly. that's... So, anyway. That, that, that's a huge thing. But before we go on, yeah, I want to thank you for being able to show up again. You are welcome. And thank you for being able to show up again. And of course... Thanks to all you guys down in MP City. What's going on? You think I forgot the deck mob? What's up? What's up? What's up? Um, oh, man. I totally messed up that transition. Let's try that again. <laughs> oh, that's better. That's better. That, that's a lot better. And boom. There we go. <laughs> Wait. Uh, that. Yeah. Oh, God. I don't like that white flash. I'm going to have to fix that. Okay. Um, but, yeah. So, we've got um, we've got that going. And, um, yeah. <clears throat> So before we go on any further and get into the crux of the show, yeah. I got to do the begging. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what I got to do. Yeah, do. Do what you, you know, do, That's man. the whole thing. So thank you guys for showing up. Your support means a lot. Thanks for throwing out the fan notices and the cheers and all that stuff. And um, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about what I do during the week is because I'm doing my best to make the channel run full time. And um, But with that, I'm going to need your help. So um, if you guys... Um, can deign to find it in you to head down to Patreon. Um, you know, you can check out our stuff, but you know what? I am going to do this correctly. And when I say I'm going to do this correctly, I mean... That's oh, yeah, right. Gotta have them, uh, them audio yeah, views. gotta have that music going. Like I said, I'm a little bit tired. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> um, head on down to um, patreon.com slash bid underscore p become a patron check out the stuff that we have going up the patron only posts um most of these posts go up on patreon like minutes to a day depending on the editing stuff and all that stuff um that um that we do um shortly after um 
like almost directly after the show. Um, if you want to help us out in a more immediate fashion, then feel free to check out um, our GoFundMe. Um, our GoFundMe, you know, has been up for about eight months and stuff like that, but it does receive, um, it does receive your guys' things. Now, again, I'm trying to get a little more high energy. You know what I mean? I'm trying to I, be like, yeah. Believe me, I do know what you mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to get, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to be a little more high energy right now because I'm hearing my voice, and I don't mean my voice in, um, in that sense of I'm hearing myself, like I'm really hearing myself talk right now, and I'm like, ah. This is this is unacceptable. This is completely unacceptable. You know? Why don't we Why don't we talk about something and get hype on it? Yeah, actually. Um, well, one of the first things that I want to keep talking about is, of course, um, is of course, how can these people get a hold of us? You know, how how, how can they do that? Well, if you're wondering how to get a hold of us or who we are and all that jazz. I get that. I completely get that. And what I have to say on that, there we go. Like I said, I'm doing my best here, guys. I'm doing my best. But feel free to contact us at backinthedeck at gmail.com. You can also check out some of our stuff on YouTube. I'm starting to record a lot of individual YouTube things just to go, hey, this is for YouTube specifically. And that is that is the way that that is going to go, period. I'm doing the YouTube thing. And... Um, <clears throat> Um, so you'll get some content there, some Patreon exclusive content over on Patreon. Feel free to join Deckers on the Book. People are finally starting to put up a lot more stuff that they're doing, um, with the 3D print stuff and all the other stuff that the Deckers are doing in their spare time. Now, SoundCloud is an interesting thing that I want to talk to some people about today, but also follow us on, um, Instagram at Back in the Deck. So, with that... I gotta say, um, you know, I hope you guys are having a good time and doing that whole thing. Um, but yeah, so with that, I'm going, ooh, look at all that. Mm. Ah. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just making sure that that's not a thing. And um, so yeah, and ooh, doggy. So yeah, and we got a few other thing, uh, a few other things that came down. Now the thing I wanted to talk to you and you guys, and you guys over in NP City about today, is, um, <laughs> wow, that's so nice, um, is last week, an interesting thing happened. Oh, yeah? Yeah, a bill came, uh, and, okay. yeah, it's a very important bill, it's the bill for our SoundCloud account, oh. and, yeah, yeah, and... I'm I'm having such a hard time doing this, and what I'm what I'm doing right now is some of the most unprofessional stuff I could possibly do, but I want to get people's thoughts on it, which okay. is, um, if I pay the SoundCloud bill, the audio archive goes right back up, because okay. what you guys don't know is that SoundCloud, Stitcher, Twitch, all that other stuff, um, well not Twitch, but SoundCloud, Stitcher, the audio places, you can get a free account, but SoundCloud specifically says, hey, you can have a free account. Upload your stuff. You get three hours. Worth of content? Yeah. Mm. Which is um, good if you're, you know, putting up your random songs you're you're doing oh yeah. around with. Three it's hours great if you're is... a musician. It gives you about three CDs worth of stuff. Yeah. That's, you know? that's a solid amount of screwing around content on uh, SoundCloud. That yeah. is not even like a week for you, is it? That's two episodes. Yeah, two episodes two, of the thing. Yeah, two shows. Yeah. Two shows. So I'm wondering if... Now I'm looking into other platforms for um, the audio content because if I put the stuff back up on SoundCloud, the audio archive goes up. It's all great. It's all dandy. I can do the whole thing that I normally do. But is it worth the investment? Because not a lot of people are listening to us on SoundCloud at the moment. So do I pay for it now and really try and get it going in the next year, or do I pour my energies elsewhere? This is the problem that bosses go through. So what are your thoughts on that? Um, my thoughts, personally, mm -hmm. is, uh, I don't particularly care for SoundCloud. I don't download our stuff on SoundCloud. I like the video component of it, mm -hmm. and most of the people I talk to do as well. Or if they're not really interested in listening to the video, they'll still put the video on and just not watch it. Because mm -hmm. they can still get it on YouTube or whatever, have the video going, and then just do something else and listen to us 
so I, I feel like SoundCloud is a redundant expense that doesn't need to be spent personally. I get that. Now, here's a here's a thing that you're not considering. Okay. Um, I'd say within the next month or so, um, if you don't catch our show live on Twitch, it then goes up on Patreon. Sure. And off of Twitch. Yeah. So if they miss our show, they'll have to be patrons. But what if they can't afford it? And I know a dollar a month isn't a whole lot, but some people don't have that. God knows I didn't as a kid. Yeah. But the SoundCloud stuff is free. So they can listen to us for free or pay to listen to and watch us. So um, what my thoughts on it are right now is I'm looking at other podcasting um, platforms mm-hmm. like um, um, iTunes. Yeah, iTunes. That's, Who's not that, an Apple guy? That's, um, that's one of them. Yeah, yeah iTunes, um, Stitcher, stuff like that. I'm also learning a lot about RSS feeds, mm-hmm. so I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that. So um, I'm probably going to put a poll up on Patreon, put a poll up on Twitter, um, and see what we can do because I'm not sure. I'm really not sure what the best place to spend the business money is in, and I know half of that is coming from, how can I put it? Do you know what I have to do for the money for this stuff? <laughs> hey, man, you know, $20 is $20. I'm hmm? just... <laughs> yeah, but a hundred and fifty is a hundred and fifty. So no, that, I, I got you. That, that's a day and a half of sweating in a metal box that's standing in the sun. So is it worth it? I don't know. I really don't know. So, well, um, you know, my my opinion on the subject there, as yeah. far as SoundCloud's concerned. Yeah. So but, you know, maybe iTunes, maybe something. Yeah. Uh, who's to say? What I am going to do is I'm going to do some more market research. That's why I didn't say the SoundCloud thing during the um. You know the patter during yeah during during you know our intro time because it's not up. Mm. The SoundCloud isn't up right now because once I pay that money, it's gone. Yeah. But the but the SoundCloud is up for the next year. Hmm. So you know it's up for the next year, and it's not a problem. But do I pay for the next year? That's right. that's the question. And you know resources are resources. Yeah. You have them until you don't. <laughs> and once you don't, that's done. Now, sometimes it's once smoke we, them if you got them, sort of thing. You yeah. Know? Now, once we get enough patrons, it won't be a question. True. It won't be a question. True. You know, and that's one of the reasons that I keep talking to people about seeing us at Patreon.com, because currently, you know, we have five followers, and that's cool. But what we really need are about three hundred followers at the twenty dollar and higher tiers. Once we have those, then this place can run smooth. Sure. Smooth. Yeah. Like, 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 um, smooth, like good pudding, <laughs> you know? Like, like good pudding, just smooth. Mm. No, but right now we got a lot of lumps. A whole lot of lumps. Yeah. Mm. Um, but, so, that, that's the official stuff. Now, there's some stuff that came up. Um, you know, it's funny because we're moving into spring. And spring yeah. is fascinating. Um, Spring is hot already in Southern California. Mm-hmm. Yeah, winter is hot yeah, in Southern California. Yeah, it's still California. January and winter's over. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, it was, God, for those of you guys across the country, it was like 85, 86 degrees here, like Tuesday. Yeah. And I'm sitting up going, wait, isn't it mid-January? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, But like with it, spring coming, that means it's fair season. Yep. Festival season. Yep. And convention season. Oh, goodness. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. I'm going to be, uh, as I was telling you, but I'll, I'll tell our viewers here, I'm going to be doing the Corona Renaissance Fair this year. And uh, that means there's going to be a five week block where I'm, I will not be doing the show because I'll be gone on Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to lose you from May to June. Yep. That, that's like, you know, fortunately, like you're leaving after Memorial Day. So you'll be here for the birthday extravaganza, Woo-hoo. you know, <laughs> um, which is cool because that'll be the year that I become the answer to life, the universe, <laughs> and everything. And I'm looking forward to that. Good. Not as much as I'm looking toward to 50, but um, that's still a ways off, you know. But, uh, yeah, so we've got a convention coming up um, right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I'm talking, of course, about the California Comic Con. Um, it's actually, you know, it's it's got Ron Wilson and Mike Wilsonberg. 
you know, as you can see, um, I'm pretty sure they, they did the comics that are being featured there, but if not, then sorry. Um, but yeah, and that's oh. happening um, in Fullerton, California, as we speak. Which is funny. I live in Fullerton. I didn't know this. <laughs> like, I... Yeah. Well, in all fairness, though, you're not a comic guy. It's true. You're not That's a comic not really, guy. really... And I don't really follow... I'm not a con guy either, for the most part. So... Well, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, but we have to be, because um, we do footage from cons. No, I, I get so. you. Um, and there's another one coming up in Pasadena. And, of course, there's your favorite in San Diego. Yeah, the one con I do get excited for every year, Kingdom Con. Yes, Kingdom Con, the Kingdom Convention, San Diego's premier gaming convention. And what this is, is the San Diego Comic Con for tabletop gamers. Yep. You know, and... The, um, the best description I have of it um, is it's your friendly local game store where everyone is just hanging out and playing board games but also there's a lot of drinking <laughs> and so it's it's that time when all the nerds can get together play games really just kind of let their hair down and have a lot of fun it is so great it is the most casual fun atmosphere i have like it, it is just full of people who you can just sit down play a game with that you've never played before it's outstanding i absolutely love it oh that is very very cool yeah um, and listeners, you know, I've uh, I've been trying to get Solar for years to go to Kingdom Con. So if you want to see Solar Great, the cinematic sorcerer at Kingdom Con, you should let us know because I'm sure if you guys demand it, <coughs> who am I? Who who am I but a mere co-host? But if you guys tell him to do it, he'll probably show up. Okay, you see that that's <laughs> yes, it's pandering. You're becoming more media savvy. I have to, I have to give you that. Like, I really want you to do a thing. So, you guys out uh, there, tell him to yep. do what I am sending messages through the press. That yeah. is what I'm doing, dude. Watch the West Wing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Kingdom Con, I'd like to go. I'd like to go. Um, well, I but if I go, uh, if I go, we're doing shows from Con. Yeah, that, that's the whole thing that's because it's during the weekend. Yeah. And of course on Saturdays we've got the weekly one shot. Yeah. And we've got this show. There's a lot of people there you can draft into a D and D game, whether it's a one shot or do a, something for the whole weekend. Yeah. There's oh man, there's now, it's a it's fertile ground. Yeah, now I am super, super sad that I was relatively sick yesterday. Mm. Because at um Emerald I think it's the Emerald Castle, mm -hmm. um, they had a one shot um a one-shot event of kids on bikes. Ooh. Yeah, but nice. I was just too sick to go nice. to um, too sick to go to Burbank yesterday, yeah. um, which is like an hour or so behind. Um, that would but, be a fun game. Uh, yeah. Kids on bikes would be a great game to do at Kingdom Con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is just about the right amount of commitment. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, it's a game where. Uh, if your players are uh, enjoying some libations, they're not going to be completely incapable of understanding what's going on or knowing how the rules work. Yeah, see, that you're, you're saying it right there. That is the reason that I'm kind of reticent to go to Kingdom Con. Is, um, in truth, um, I don't like being around drunk people. I really don't like being Most around drunk Most people, people there are not drunk until after 9 or 10 at night. Yeah, but that's still 9 or 10 at night until dawn that I have to be around drunk people. Oh. Um, it, it's just a personal thing. Um, how can I put it? I'm not a big fan of drunk ideas or high ideas. Yeah. You know. I mean, I'm just saying, you've got literally all day of people there for serious gaming, mm -hmm. and then you have the relaxed drunk gaming in the evening. There's something for everyone. It just depends on what time you oh, want yeah. to, you know, be awake and active at the con. Yeah, so that that's... It, it's something I, I gotta consider and things like that. But, um, on another set of announcements today, um, Bid P posted something over on, um, Deckers on the Book. Okay, um, ooh, boy. Hey, look at that. Um, yeah, they posted something over on Deckers on the Book. Um. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, about why representation in geek culture matters. And I want to talk a little bit about that today. Yeah. We can give a, a quick Cliff's Notes version for those who haven't seen the actual post. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it was uh, effectively someone who works in a bookstore um, had a, uh, a young girl 
show up and uh, was was panicking because she was trying to find comics with um, good LGBT representation in it. And the person telling the story um, was also a lesbian. And well, remember, not just good represent, good LGBT represent, representation, but she specifically showed up looking for Supergirl that's comics right, that's because right. of the Supergirl television show. Right. So, yeah, and because of the story arc of yeah. one of the characters from this from this television show, and the the person who was at the bookstore, you know, recognized in this girl, you know, herself several years earlier. And was like, okay, here's my opportunity to, you know, to step forward and to show you where some good content is, to show you some good comic books, uh, some really great stuff that'll help you along your journey, make you feel like you're part of a community, you know, like be there for someone who really needed it. And it was this great story of someone in the community helping someone else to become a part of a community that they needed to be a part of. Exactly. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, so it's over at Deckers on the Book. Of course, Deckers on the Book, just join the whole thing and you can take a look at that. But that made me want to talk about something this week. And that is the actual importance of representation. And I think um, right now in the current climate of the country as a whole, Okay. Um, it's an important subject to tackle. Now I ain't getting political, y'all. Yeah. I'm not. We're not going to be talking about anything happening in a st in a district by Virginia. Okay. <laughs> we're not. We're not going to be talking about that. But what I will say is, um, there is an interesting effect um, of people that have representation, mm -hmm. or people that have always had representation. <laughs> not fully understanding what it means to not be represented. Yeah. You know, um, again, the story in and of itself was great because, you know, I, I'm i not part of the LGBT community. I fall into the POC category yeah. of what we do. Like, you couldn't see that, but that's for our SoundCloud listeners if and when they come back. Um, <laughs> but um, being like... I just recently watched one of the new Marvel cartoons, mm -hmm. and it features a lot of characters that there was so much backlash about when they came up. Um, hmm. It was featuring Ms. Marvel, Squirrel Girl, um, America Martinez, and uh, Ms. Marvel, or Captain Marvel, rather. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, you know, Ms. Marvel, or Captain Marvel used to be named Ms. Marvel. It's a long comic thing. It's a deep cut. Google it. Um, <laughs> and Squirrel Girl is, I'm going to call her full figured in the sense of she does not have the athletic slash adult film star build that okay. every other superhero, um, superhero female yeah. tends to have. And Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel, is Muslim. Right. And America, uh, America Martinez is Latina. Right. So she's woman and person of color. And Miss Marvel, one of the most powerful um, characters in the Marvel Universe, is a woman. Right. A woman military pilot. Like, she's right. an ace pilot for the Air Force. And, um, oh, and Captain America's um, new sidekick, Patriot, mm -hmm. who is an adolescent black boy. Hmm. So this is Marvel going, you want diversity? You're getting it all in one thing. <laughs> and... Um, and I see a lot of stuff in comment sections because I have to read the comment sections on media because I'm a media producer. Um, and people going, we don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. And I'm like, you don't. Yeah. But we do. It's not for you. Yeah. And that's the yeah. thing. It's um, and That's been one of the... One of the things that really shocked me, um, for me, it was it hit me with Star Wars. You know, oh, the, new, the new Star Wars stuff coming out with Ray and Finn. Yeah, Ray, Ray and Finn. Finn. Like all these characters that are not cishet white men, mm -hmm. and it just it's like okay, you know, we're ruining Star Wars. We don't need this. We don't need. This. And I'm like, look, man, or you know, the the part where like we don't need this again. It's not for you. It's for all of the people who don't look like Luke Skywalker out there. Just saying. Um, <laughs> and also, you're not ruining Star Wars. The old stuff didn't go anywhere. If you want to watch Star Wars with Luke Skywalker, turns out the DVDs are still DVDs, and they <laughs> didn't get altered to change Luke into a, I don't know, 
Latina woman, you know, like I, I well, yeah, the 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 stuff still exists. You didn't ruin anything. Introducing new diversity only helps more people. It doesn't diminish those who have already had representation in this in this genre. Right. So I want to talk about um, why the representation matters, and this go, this actually goes back to the 1940s and 1950s with the with the rise of commercial advertisement. Yeah. Um, advertisement, and you can see this in the show Mad Men, mm -hmm. um, once Madison Avenue got a hold of it, advertisement didn't become about selling a product. It became about selling a feeling. It's um, yeah. a feeling of you. You. Excuse me. You already want this. You want this because this made you happy. Mm -hmm. This is you. Okay. Um, most media, most media advertisements come off of this foundation of a backbone of self-insertion, okay, self-insertion, and um, wish fulfillment. Yeah. So it really comes down to when you're watching Star Wars, you as a cishet white man, mm -hmm. you, you, that's you, are Luke Skywalker. Yep. You are Han Solo. It's easy to just jump right in there. You know, pick your favorite one. You want to be one of the good guys, one of the bad guys. Hey, man, they're all cishet white men in the Star Wars. Yeah. Like, and unless, unless you're... Unless you know, you're Lando, which is the treacherous sidekick. And he doesn't show up until the second movie, you know. And the other options are, well, there's a cishet white woman, uh, and there's a Wookiee. So, oh, and there's an old cishet white man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And like, and if you look at the rebel base, it's all men with a few rare exceptions are all white. And, you know, I, I get why the, you know, for those of you who don't know, uh, the, the, when they were producing Star Wars, it was pretty low budget for the first movie. They were using whatever was available. They were filming in Britain in the 1970s. Most actors in Britain in the 1970s were white men. Yeah. It, it's just... It was what they had cheaply available. And, you know, that was 42, 43 years ago. Yeah. Um, so when it comes down to the media that we consume, um, and how does this relate to games? We're getting there. Yeah, we're just, getting Just there. bear with us. Uh, when it comes to the media that we consume, um, if all of the advertisements for all media, billboards, commercials, news reports, YouTube videos, mm -hmm. all of the ads that you have to wait five seconds before skipping, yep. they're all saying... This is you. Yep. But if you're not a cishet white man in America or a cishet white woman in America, you're looking at something that's saying, this is you, this will make you happy. But it doesn't look like you. Yeah. It doesn't feel like you. It does, All those images you're looking at are not yours. Right. I know growing up a person of color in the urban environment, when I looked at um, family shows, mm -hmm. like Party of Five, Eight is Enough, um, full house. Mm -hmm. Those were all really nice neighborhoods with really nice people and no danger saying, this is you. Yep. And I'm going, but it's not. Yeah, I can't it's insert myself into this show. You this, know. this isn't the life I live. These aren't the people that look like me. This isn't the environment I find myself in. Right, which the only mechanism that one has at that point is, well, the, not the only, but one of the safest, and this is the one that I took, was third-party omniscient observation. Yeah. I'm looking at these people's lives. I'm, when I'm reading a comic, as much as I could be like Spider-Man, because I have financial troubles. Yeah. However, if I get fired from a job, I don't get that many more chances. Right. Cops don't let me off in the same way that they let Peter Parker off. I got to pay a lot of tickets. Yeah. You know? Um, but... Though I'm looking at a character that I have one or two things in common as, I'm not Peter. Right. And I'm looking at Peter from the outside. And most popular media for people of color, LGBT, women, the disabled, um, and the poor have to be, or th those people, we people, have to look at all of this stuff about living good lives, um, being good people, being fiscally solvent enough to start wondering about how good a person you actually are. Yeah. We look at that from the outside. We are outsiders. 
So when it comes to inclusion, when you see someone that has a big thing <clears throat> like the race, the religion, the creed, the social class, um, the gender identity, mm -hmm. the you know all of those things I talk about when I'm going really, really, really fast. Um, when you see someone that has something on, on popular media that represents how you're connected in that large way, I don't mean like, that character wears a purple sweater. I have a purple sweater. Da, 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 da. Right, right, no, right. No, that person's a Muslim living in post-9-11 uh, post New York right. in the case of Simon Baz, the Green Lantern. Right. You know, um, then that's a character that a Muslim living in post 9-11 New York can imprint on and find inspiration from. A 12-year-old Muslim boy can look at Simon Baz going, okay, this character goes through a lot of the stuff that I go through with the people looking at him with mistrust. Yeah. And um, when, um, what is her name? She's a valiant comic. Um, but she is not a thin woman. Mm. She is a sturdy gal. <laughs> really sturdy gal, actually. The character, if she were made into a regular, regular real person, mm -hmm. or if she were cast, um, she is a white blonde woman who is about 240 pounds. Mm. And she can fly, and she's a superhero. So she doesn't have an athletic build. Yeah. But you know what? Most women aren't built like Hollywood stars because they don't have personal trainers right. and nine hours a day to be at the gym, you know? And it, it's just a whole thing. So when a lot of women look at these comic characters, that it can tug on the heartstrings of, that's not me, right. that will never be me, I will be outside. And then they see this character from Valiant Comic, who was amazing, by the way, <laughs> and um, I might pull up a picture of her, but um, when they see this woman, doing good things being a good person they can say you know there's a piece of them right that goes i'm okay you know yeah there's a there's a, like you say that self-insertion that like look i can see myself in here i can see this character that looks like me that i identify with being cast in a favorable light that does good things for me and you know as you're as you were talking one of the things that uh was going through my mind you know one of the other controversies going around right now uh, is the Boy Scouts of America has recently become just Scouting BSA. They changed their name, um, and they are allowing girl scout or like girls into the troops. Mm -hmm. So it's no longer exclusively a male organization. Right. Which you know a lot of people there's been a lot of controversy. I'm not here to discuss the controversy, but one of the things that they did at, now that everything's getting off the ground is they released the latest edition of the Boy Scout Handbook, and or I should say now it's just the Scouting Handbook, which you know. It's pretty, it's not anything particularly gendered. It's all stuff about survival skills and you know, all the stuff you need to do to be a scout and all this other stuff. But they released two copies of it, the girl version and the boy version. A lot of people all up in arms. Oh my God, you know, why would, you're trying to have, you know, this integrated thing. Why would you have these two separate handbooks? Why are you having things be separate? And they pointed out, look, the content in the books, the actual things you're reading is identical. Both mm -hmm. the books absolutely identical. The thing that changes are the pictures. So the girls' book has pictures of girls in it mm -hmm. so that young kids who need to do that self-insertion and see themselves in a camping situation can then do it and feel like this book is for me. Mm -hmm. This is a place I feel welcome because I see myself in this material, in this media that is presented to me. Exactly. And it's such a small thing, but it's a huge thing that you don't think about when you're a little kid. Well, you say it's a small thing, but it is a huge thing. And one of the things that is showing us the huge thing is something I'll bring up in a minute. I'll say I'll bring it up in a minute because I found a picture. Okay. A uh, Faith Herbert um, character, Zephyr. And there she is. Nice. Like I said, she is a sturdy gal. She's a sturdy gal, all right? <laughs> you know? Yep. Um, and again, I'm not, I'm not the type of person that... Um, that judges judges characters from one thing, but let's face it, if it's a comic book character, it's one thing that sets them apart from the rest of the world. Her thing is a superpower. Most of them are superpowers, right. but when you think of a character, you think of their costume or mm -hmm. something like that, and the writers and artists of um, Zephyr, which is the comic, um, or sorry, Faith, 
which is the comic from Valiant, said, you know what? This is going to be a realistically built woman. <laughs> that is Good. what is going to happen. Good. And um, But when you say it's a small thing, um, when you say that it's a small thing, it is a small thing in the grand scale of things. However, it must not be a small thing considering all the pushback yes. that happens. And what, um, I, what I meant by it's a small thing is I meant it's a small thing to do. It's oh, not, it's not yeah. difficult to do. It's not... It's not like you have to, again. They didn't have to rewrite the Boy Scout handbook. <laughs> no, they just had they to just, change up some pictures. They changed <laughs> the pictures. They just took the same. Whoop, they took you know, they have boys pitching a tent, mm -hmm. and then they have girls pitching a tent, and that's it. That's that's the entirety of the difference between these two things. They took two different pictures, but that small act of taking that extra step can have huge repercussions for the people who receive that media exactly. and who are influenced by it. Exactly. And, um, yeah, so one of the things that I saw, like, um, there is just speaking of Star Wars, and I don't want to make this a Star Wars podcast, so no. you're going to have to broaden your, the stuff that you talk I about. I mean, um, but it's very culturally of, relevant. Yeah, but speaking of the whole Star Wars thing on that, the biggest pushback came with these sequels. Yep. Um, we've so far got pushback that... Oh my God! There's a black stormtrooper, oh, and I remember yeah. when Voyager first came out. People's, like, I saw bleeding from the ears when it's like Vulcans can be black. I'm like, yeah, Humans and can be Tuvok black. was a good <laughs> character. Um, yeah, but yeah, you have Vulcans a black stormtrooper. Yeah. You've got a woman Jedi, mm -hmm. and you've got a possibly gay space pirate. Yeah, and people are going no. And it's like, what's so wrong about that? Yeah, you know, um, I see Camel Heart over anything. in um, yeah, <laughs> Camel Heart over in a thing is like because boys and girls are different. She says sarcastically, but I'm going to answer with a straight sarcastic. face. Boys and girls are different, but skill sets generally don't care who learns them. <laughs> um, a tent doesn't care if there is um, an X chromosome or a Y chromosome. It cares. If it blows away in the wind, sure. I mean, it's, it's, I, it's I don't think simple. I don't think Camel Heart's being sarcastic on that. I think okay. that's that's being earnest. Boys and girls are different, mm -hmm. and if if I was as a boy reading media that was exclusively full of girls, I I would have a hard time self inserting into that. And if I was a young boy, that would be you know something like, well, okay, well, I have a hard time feeling like I'm welcome in this camping thing. Mm -hmm. Because oh. all the pictures are not of people who look like me. Okay. And the chat's sitting up going, that's why the books are different, because boys and girls are different. Yeah, yeah, you're you're right. Okay, yeah. I, I misinterpreted. But yeah, yeah so um, so when it comes to that representation, and again, this, this goes back to the mission statement of Back in the Deck Productions in yeah. the first place. We are here because representation matters. Yes. Your voice matters. You're Latino, your voice matters. Like, I'm a big black dude. My voice matters just as much as the cis hat white male here and the women that are on the show their voices matter everybody's voices matter especially when it comes to talking about the things that give us inspiration now that doesn't mean that every voice is right it doesn't mean that every voice is well thought out and i say this because the doors are still closed to those who would close the door once they're in Okay. You know, yeah. we're very anti gatekeeper. And it's like, well, you didn't let me in. No, because you slammed the door on, on in the last eight groups that you're that you were in. Yeah. So you can come in, but you don't get door privileges. You know? Yeah, and, and it's yeah. One thing that I'm I'm noticing as I'm paying more attention to gatekeeping in general, especially with mm -hmm. gaming, is it's just it's gatekeeping all the way down. Everyone's trying to find some way to gatekeep someone out of something at some point. Mm -hmm. And I saw one uh uh one post that was joking about it, but really made me think about it. It was um, the the meme is it's a guy sitting at a table and he's got a he was casually sipping a cup of coffee and it says you know it has a thing that says change my mind at the bottom of it. Yes. So uh, this one was people who only play video games aren't real gamers. Change my mind. It's just like you know again it's joking because in the video game community it's like oh people who only play mobile games aren't real gamers. People, yeah. And it's like. Do you play a thing that is a game? You're a gamer. Why is this an issue? Is it a video game? Is it a tabletop game? Is it a role-playing game? Is it a card game? <laughs> you can be a gamer. It's how you want to identify. Don't gatekeep. Don't gatekeep people out 
of doing things they love to do. Well, one of the things that are on that, and this is big, okay, this is a big thing, <clears throat> is what Sigmund Freud calls the narcissism of small differences. Um, yeah. People keep looking for something that makes them better than someone else in no matter what minuscule way. But the rise of the internet, oh, along with Western civilization, yeah. has done something really big, and I'm going to get so much crap in the comments for this. <laughs> Western civilization is built on the idea of limited ethereal resources. You need to find ethereal. Ethereal? Yeah. Um, ideas. Love. Relevance. Oh. Time. Yeah. So Zero sum resources. Yes, yeah, zero yeah. sum resources. But I, I say ethereal because th this is important. Zero sum is a quantifi quantifiable thing. Right. Okay. Which is what it tries to make it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you can matter. Well, if I matter, it doesn't mean that you don't. Right. If I say the sky is blue and you say the sky is baby blue, we can both be right. True. Um, if I say that the sky is blue any day of the week and you say the sky is black at night, we're both relevant. Correct. You know, we can both state facts and those facts be relevant. So, yeah, if you play a game, you're a gamer. I don't play video games very much. I think I play video pool on one of my sure. tablets. Um, but I do. I've been doing tabletop games and board games. Mm -hmm. And occasionally I'll do um, sport martial arts. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I play games all over the place. But do I have to play Halo to be a gamer? According to some. Or more, you know, like you can really extend it to the point of absurdity. If you play football, are you a gamer? If you play any physical sport, are you? A, those are games. Mm -hmm. By the literal definition, you play them, you're a gamer. If you play foosball, are you a gamer? If you if you go down to the bar and get real drunk and you play pool and darts, are you a gamer? Does it matter? Does the label itself have any relevance? And why are you trying to gatekeep people out of this, yeah. saying some people are gamers and some aren't? And one of the reasons that I've seen is that um, the people who do this are afraid that they will no longer matter. Yes. It's, if I let these new people in, they'll take over the thing and I'll become irrelevant. And I've, I've actually talked to a friend of mine extensively about this. He was, um, well, his job is he does community management for game companies. Well, mm -hmm. actually, he's currently not doing it for game companies. He's doing it for car companies. But for a long time, it was game companies. Specifically, it was game companies during Gamergate. Mm. So for him, he was right on the front lines. Uh, you know, he's, he's a passionate gamer, video gamer, mm -hmm. specifically. And... So he was very much like, these are my people. And then he had this very rude awakening that, no, these are not my people. My people <laughs> suck. And he's so he has this very strong reaction to this idea that some things are games and some things aren't. And it's specifically what you just said, that some people are afraid of not feeling relevant. They've built their entire identity as a person, as a human being mm -hmm. around this label that I am a gamer, and for them, it is because they do specific things, like I only play PC video games or Halo or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. They have this definition that they've constructed in their mind of what makes a gamer, and they've constructed their entire identity around it, and that's what separates them from other people. It's what helps give them any sort of relevance in their own life, in their own head. And so suddenly somebody says, yeah, sure, anybody who plays a mobile game can be a gamer, as, as Camel Hart was pointing out. Simpsons tapped out. You play a game on your phone? Yeah. So you play Simpsons tapped out on your phone, you're a gamer. Mm -hmm. Cool. But if someone has built their entire identity as a human being around the <laughs> fact that they play Halo, and anyone who says that they're a gamer is like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. You can't be in the same category as me because you play Simpsons tapped out. And it's the you can't be in the same category as me because you haven't put as much work yeah. into doing this as I. And I'm like, look, just stop. Just stop. Yeah. And this was one of the reasons that I left the tournament scene all those years ago. Oh. Um, because I was recently, and by recently I mean in the past two years, at a game store um, playing or, you know, watching people play a game that you and I met over. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I play this faction. And somebody's like, yeah, he plays fluff that faction. And I'm like, what does that matter? Yeah. Why, why does it matter? I like the lore. I like the fluff. I play the game. I know the rules well enough to be a judge of the game. Yeah. So why is it that 
I prefer to play casually and not competitively. Yep. What is it that makes my casual play style um, lesser than your competitive play style? Yeah. And I, um, but again, that whole gatekeeping and all that stuff, didn't want to go on that. I really want to talk about the representation. Yes. So I'm going to close out the representation part with this. People who are represented tend to not notice that they are. Oh, absolutely. Until someone else is. And that's where that fear comes up. Yeah. Well, if stormtroopers are black, I can't think of myself as being a stormtrooper. If um, superhero women are rotund, Mm -hmm. (laughs) then I can't play pocket pool to to, (laughs) um, that superhero woman. So it's all ruined. And it's like, dude, take a step back. Yeah. You know, I've got loads of chill pills over here. <laughs> if, They're dipped if, in chocolate coating, makes them go down easier. You know? If this latest story happens to involve a girl being a Jedi, I can't possibly imagine myself becoming a Jedi. Never mind the other six movies about a straight white man becoming a Jedi. You're forgetting about the 25 books for TV shows. I'm talking about, I'm talking about <laughs> explicitly on uh, film. Apples okay. to apples. Okay, okay. Like, we're not going into any extended universe, because that's a deep well that I could bore <laughs> about our audience yeah. to death about. Okay, fair enough. We're sticking with films. We're not even going into the Clone Wars cartoon, or the Rebels cartoon, or all the other great examples of Star Wars media that shows non-cishet white men. We're talking about the live action, Okay. you know... You still got all that. You like just because the new stuff is representing other people, like that's what just boggles my mind. It's the people who feel it somehow insulted. Like their their experience is now lesser because every single moment of their experience is not about them. Yeah. And, and it's that that fragility just boggles my mind. Well, um so that I'm I'm glad that you brought that up and we're only gonna talk about it for a hot minute because okay. I'm trying to keep our segments tight yeah. so that I have YouTube segments. <laughs> um, but yeah, so one of the things, um, you, you talk about that fragility. Thing. Yeah. That is, um, excuse me, I'm glad that you brought that up because fragility is a very, very, very prevalent thing these days. Oh my God. And I think I know where it came from. Um, I can go on about sociology and yeah. all that other stuff for days, but... Being a member of Generation X, watching this thing happen, mm-hmm. fragility, the fragility based on if X is important, then I am not important, okay. is something that was built up um, majorly in the 1980s, and it started from the workplace down. Hmm. As soon as corporations started taking over businesses and then liquidating them for short-term gain, yeah. or more to the point... We know it regularly today, but I can remember a time when someone coming in and asking you to write out what you do at your job was not a regular thing. Hmm. If you had a job, you had the job, and all you had to do to prove your relevance to the company was to do your job. Hmm. And in the 1980s and on, with the rise of corporatism, I guess, um, businesses in order to make a higher profit, started going, are you relevant? Are you really relevant? Yeah. What Show me that say you're relevant. What you do here, Bob? And for eight hours a day, those people go home to their families. Yeah. And they've been proving that they're relevant at work all day. And then they go home and that behavior doesn't stop. Yeah. So they have to prove their relevance in their families. And then pop culture changed. This... In my opinion, is one of the reasons that there's so much pushback against feminism currently, mm. because men are kind of going, well, I don't know what it means to be a man because everything I was taught to, that makes me a man. And I'm just kind of going, look, you have to take a moment and ask yourself really what you believe being a man comes to and are you living up to those practices? Yeah. Are you living up to the principles, the spirit of it, not the letter of it? Yeah. And um, But that's very hard to do because people lose their jobs over the letter of their own relevance they lose their families over the letter of their own relevance so the more evidence that somebody gets gets put in front of them that says you're relevant now yeah the more frightened 
they get. So that zero something that we were talking about during the during yep. the gatekeeping and um, yeah, during the gatekeeping part, um, they live that the majority of their day. Yep. Everything is zero sum. And I, the idea, if you are less rel, or if there's more competition, then you are in danger. There's a limited number of relevance that can exist at this job and if someone is more relevant than you you lose automatically there's no room for you to adjust adapt anything you just lose mm -hmm. and that's something i've experienced a lot very frustratingly in my jobs mm -hmm. um a lot of my coworkers end up with that mindset especially the ones who've been there a long time is finding ways to make themselves relevant and it ends up being weird dumb busy work and it's like you're just you're literally working circles around yourself so that you can pretend like you're relevant so that when somebody asks what would you say you do here you have an answer and the i think you're right on the money that this trickles down to everyone's personal lives because if you spend all day every day saying what would you say you do here and you go well let me show you the spreadsheet that i have been doing instead of actually working to tell you about why I matter here and why <laughs> why this company matters to me and I matter to this company and my entire identity is wrapped up in this thing right here because that's because how Because if it isn't, you're going to fire me. Exactly. <laughs> exactly cuz if like cuz somebody who's more eager to sell their soul to this company is out there like, well, if I'm not the most zealous about this, I must not really matter. And I didn't come up with this in a vacuum. I will say this. Oh, sure. Um I first noticed it in public parks. Hmm. Public parks. Um, I used to walk around the park, and I saw how parents of young children judge other parents oh. of young children. God, as a parent of a young child, I just want to punch them in the face. Yeah, and, um, you know, um, I think back to when my daughter was young, and there was this big to-do about a $300 stroller. Ugh. And... Yeah. I have always thought along the things of, does the thing do the job? Sure. It does the job, let's do the thing. But those that narcissism of small differences leading to um, fragility of relevance yep. um, came up and it became issues. And I'm like, I've got bigger things in my life to worry about. Holy crap, you don't. Yeah. Okay, all right. That's... I, I get that. I, I totally get that. Yeah. Um, because, again, this is... When you're represented, when you're doing well, it doesn't feel like you're doing well. Of course not. I recall a friend of mine once looked at me and said, um, they told me what they were doing, and I'm like, dude, you're such a hero. And they said, I don't feel like a hero. And I'm like, what the hell do you think a hero feels like? Wasn't that me like two years ago that you were saying that to? Yes. Yeah. 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 I just didn't want to call you out specifically oh, okay. on air. <laughs> That's not cool. But if you, hey, if you out yourself. Yeah. But um, yeah. I, I remember that conversation because it was a very... It was a very illuminating moment for me because you were just, again, you're just like, well, what does a hero feel like? And it's like, quite a crap. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Sure. You know, mm. And that comes down to what does representation feel like? What does it feel like to matter? Yeah. What does it feel like to be represented? Honestly, for, for the people that created the necessity for for this company it feels normal yeah but for those of us that it doesn't feel normal to like representation feels normal to some yeah but to those of us who haven't been represented especially represented positively right it doesn't feel normal it feels um what's the term exclusive yeah okay um and again i i I, I started thinking about this stuff because Black Panther got um, nominated for an Oscar mm -hmm. for Best Picture. And people are like, well, and I'm like, look, I personally don't believe it, it It needs Best Picture. But the relevance and people saying, it's race baiting. And I'm like, no, stop. It's a damn good movie. It's showing black people. It, it's representing black excellence. Yes. To a generation that has never seen it. We've seen the help. Mm -hmm. We've seen 12 Years a Slave. Mm -hmm. We've seen 100 gangster mm -hmm. movies. We know the struggle. Yeah. But the top of the mountain is very rarely represented. Yeah. And and, th and th one of the things that you pointed out to me that I was like, oh, this is a really cool thing, was the idea of Afrofuturism, something that most people in white culture, in white American culture, are very not familiar with, mm -hmm. to the point where I didn't know the <laughs> word until you pointed out. And then I started looking it up, and I was like, 
oh, this is a whole genre. Wow, there's some, there's some really cool stuff in here. Yeah, and yeah. like, it was this very mainstream example of it that didn't beat you over the head with it, but it was like, hey, look, there is this whole super cool genre out there that you can dig into that is, like you say, it's the top of the mountain. It's showing black people and black culture in an extremely positive way and just showing it as being this is normal. This is how these people live. They live well. They have high technology. They have good lives. This is not a movie about their struggle. Yeah, and the like, first time that that kind of representation was done for black people in the mainstream was The Cosby Show, followed yeah. by The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Now it's blackish, and occasionally we get a movie. Um, but that hasn't quite happened for the LGBT community yet. Oh, uh, yeah, it sure hasn't. Hasn't quite happened for the disabled. Though, you know? interestingly, I, I was seeing an article the other day. Um, you're familiar with the show Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah. Um, and it was... You're kidding? It's Terry Crews. I, um, yeah. But they were they were interviewing Andy Sandberg about it, and oh. they were they were uh, saying why did he throw him to the ground? <laughs> <laughs> um, but the the gist of it was they were asking him, um, you know why you know all, everything's so PC nowadays. You know the there's the why I, I'm surprised there's not jokes about uh, Holt being gay in the show, and Andy Sandberg is just like he's visibly flabbergasted <laughs> because. It, like you, you can watch the process go through his mind because he realizes there's a ton of jokes about Holt being gay, but they're never at his expense in that <laughs> show. There's a ton of comedy based around the fact that this character is gay, but none of it is demeaning or derogatory or anything at all like that. And the fact that that's not how this gay character is represented means that people literally do not know how to process that humor. They only know how to see a black or how to see a gay character in this case in a negative light. And if you're not making jokes about it at his expense, then it clearly you're not really, it's too PC. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and that's a really big thing. Um, so yeah, well, this turned into a deep episode, so <laughs> let's get to some, um, let's, let's get to the gallery and today <laughs> in the gallery, you know, um, yeah, today in the gallery, um, we are actually featuring, um, a specific game um, today. Yeah, you're telling me about this one. I haven't had a chance to check it out. Yeah. Um, today's game, I'm trying to pull it up here, but I think, uh, yeah, yeah, I did that. I, I did that because I am I am wise. I am so smart. S-M-R-T. I mean, S-M-A-R-T. Um, there we go. Wait, nope, nope. Um, what? Where is that? Uh -huh. In the folder thing? <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, um, we're doing, a, well, today I'm like looking through stuff, I'm doing the notes, and something said, hey, you should check your Facebook, you should totally check your friend face right now. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look at my friend face, what, what's going on in my friend face? And sure enough, um, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so sure enough, in my friend face, oh, of course, it was already up. Um, was kind of a write-up and a few things of a new book and i'm like great this should, this should be amazing for the gallery i like the game gallery that we're doing the whole thing on the burr, the burr, the burr. um so what we've got here is the city of mist yeah now the city of mist is a noir game it's a detective noir game that is of course, it said noir, so I was already all yeah, I was in. Say, you're, like, you're, you're all in noir. I yeah. think there's a cyberpunk tag in there somewhere. Um, sort of, sort of. Yeah. Um, now, I've been reading the book today, and the fluff on this book is fascinating, but what I'm going to say is this. It looks like a fun game to play. Mm -hmm. It looks like a fun setting. But um, you and your friends are ordinary people. Mm -hmm. And there is a gate to the mythological world that exists within you that allows um, mythos or mythological characters to use you as a conduit to influence um, your plane of existence hmm. through you um, because there is a shadow war behind the realms of perception. Hmm. Now, this translates into two different things. One, detective war and two, superhero. Yeah, that, that that's that's really what that's it comes down cool. to, you know. Yeah, it's you're an ordinary person with no powers, and then this thing happens, and you end up getting powers. But what it really pushes is 
your powers are going to screw you hmm. because your powers come from a god um, from mythology. And it encourages players to come up with mythology or to pull from mythology that's out there, be it Irish, Norse, um, Greek, Roman, Egyptian. So you, you can know. just pull from any mythological being or story and say, like, you know what? I really want to be – I want my character to basically be Thor. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and research some lore, and I'm going to, like, learn what Thor was all about. And that's, that's what I'm channeling. Even if you want to channel the comic character. Thor is the dude that comes through me, so now I have lightning. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's a thing. Um, and but uh, you you said something that I want to follow up on. Uh huh. Uh, and that is that you can make yes. up your own ah. mythology. So if you just want to like start making up your own thing, like oh man, I want to have these superhero powers, but you can then, if I'm if I'm interpreting what you're saying correctly, you can uh, reverse engineer a mythology to uh, to accommodate what you want to do with this character. It is a possibility, Ooh. one would say. Very um, nice. But of course, every game that makes the character special always has to come with a downside. You know, every superhero must have sure. their kryptonite. And the downside in this game is that you don't get the powers per se. You get the gods working through you to manifest the, the effects. And this is very, very, very important because the gods have their own personalities. Mm. So they influence your subconscious and the game focuses on the dichotomy between... Do I use my powers to make the world a better place or do I keep my job? Right. <laughs> you know, do I um, push the aspect of this God forward to make the world more imaginative or do I go to work? Because, yeah, the mortgage is due. Yeah, I got to I got to pay rent. Um, that's a that's a neat idea. And I'm assuming that um, there's some sort of mechanic where the more you indulge in the aspect of your god and promote their agenda the more powerful you get i didn't read that far into it okay. again i only got it a couple of hours before we were transmitting and i'm like okay doing this doing this Ooh, all right let me read some of this stuff yeah i would be surprised if there wasn't some sort of direct benefit to that like again your force of the decision like you need the power to defeat the evil that is threatening the city you literally cannot get that power if you show up to work this week you, you need to, like, spend this week, like, basically praying to your god, summoning their power, and furthering their agenda so that they channel enough through you so that you can do the thing. But then, like you say, the mortgages do. Now, that's a conflict mm -hmm. that would make great storytelling. Therefore, <laughs> a decision has to be made and played out. Um, now, one of the things really that, that the book <laughs> pushes, um, one of the things that the story pushes in the starter set is... Um, they make it kind of kind of clear that you can totally ignore the superhero stuff all you want, hmm. but your character does know that there are more people out there like you. Mm. So it gives you the option of, dude, they got this, or, well, they got this. That might not be a good thing. Yeah. It's like knowing, like, knowing yeah. that there's more people like you out there and not knowing what their agenda is. I don't know. It depends on how much you trust the inherent goodness of humanity. Or the inherent competence of narrative characters. Ah. <laughs> you know? Um, so, yeah. So, it kind of has that. But it, it reminds me of a lot of different things in its setting. It is set in mist. It, it has a mist that separates the two realities. So, the gods are fighting and there's a magical mist that keeps yeah. the knowledge of it from people that aren't these gates. Um, so, very much X from Clamp. Or something that really reminded me of White Wolf mm -hmm. back in the day. Um, yeah, the veil that separates the spirit realm. Yes, from the, yes. Yeah. So it they always a, have some sort of variant on that in most of their games. Yeah, and next week we're going to get into why that's there mm -hmm. from a mechanic and a narrative point of view. Because it is a very important thing. In White Wolf or in general? In general. Okay. In general. Yeah. Um, we're going to try and a uh, tackle the question of... Why can't in these hard things and all these whole things, why can't my wizard use a gun? Why can't my yeah. wizard have a computer? I want technology and the magics. And the answer is very simple, but it has very complex nuances. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, in this game, it has the, yeah, there are superpowers, there's all this stuff. And one of the things it makes very clear is that because of the mist, regular people can't see the gods as they work through you, mm -hmm. they can't see your magic 
but they can see the effects. Hmm. And I think that's a really good thing that they add in this game. So you don't, like in D&D, you have dancing lights. Sure. And you cast dancing lights. Yeah, and people see the lights dancing. Sure. Uh, you have burning hands, and you do your arm thimbles and keep your hands together, and the flames come from your hands. In this one, you don't see the flames coming from your hands, but you do see the fire. So you see someone stick their hands out and everything lights on fire around them. Exactly. That's pretty cool. Actually. Exactly. That's pretty cool. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So oh, this man. this I got, game. My, my brain is on fire now with like cool ideas of, of stuff to do. Oh, well, of course it is. I did the hand. Th- oh, <laughs> um, but yeah. I, I see what you did there. <laughs> um, so yeah. So all in all, this book looks very interesting. Yeah, man. And you can find it over at. Um, I believe it's City of Mist. City of Mist is the name of the game. Um, yes, the, okay. uh, it's called City of Mist, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out because I got a buddy who's um, really into mythology and lore and superheroes, mm-hmm. and this this game sounds absolutely like impossibly up his alley. Yeah, and <laughs> so. um, and if you take a look here. Yeah. On the website, for those of you guys just listening with sound, if you go to City of Mist, C I T Y O F M I S T dot co, not dot com dot C O, um, they have the way it's set up. It's like very comic booking. Yeah. Oh, man. You know. That's cool. And um, you can actually download. Um, if you sign up for their for their mailing list, you can download. Um, the starter kit with you know the starter kit version of a core book and character sheets and all that stuff and they'll send it directly to your email for free in pdf form yeah um you know so that is that is a very cool thing um yeah i'm absolutely gonna because you sent me the um uh the starter set to it i Um, sent you the starter book not the whole starter set okay so the starter book so i'm gonna i sent you the link to that yeah and i'll see what that is but this i could absolutely see myself picking up a copy of this Mm -hmm. um which man if I can get you and my buddy Pat to play this game, and we can set up a thing. Here he goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With all the free time I have. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. If I can add more days to the week and get all you guys out there. Yeah, if I can just somehow uh, get rid of the need for sleep and work, then I have way more time for gaming. So, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so that that is a thing. Um yeah, so that is um, one of the things we... Uh, I pulled up the book itself here. Um, again, I pulled up the PDF on the um, on the computers. And um, yeah, I'm taking a look at a lot of the stuff there. It loads like incredibly slow. Um, but wow. some of the art is fun. Again, um, the starter set rule book is City of Mists. Yeah. You know, so it has very much the look at my shadowy guy that's in a half trench coat because full lengths went out with Columbine. Look it up. Um, and yes, I have a flaming hand and I have a 45 because, you know, it's noir. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, noir has always been one of my favorite genres. It's, yeah. you know, I grew up watching Humphrey Bogart movies and, and you know, things like The Big Sleep and, mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So I'm there. I'm, I'm already there. You know, I still wear the trench coat. I don't wear the fedora as much because <laughs> I saw my shadow one day when I was wearing a trench coat and fedora, and I saw it right next to the sign for a neighborhood watch. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I didn't mean the cosplay. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> literally the thing that people think of when they think of an archetypal person to be afraid of. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, you know. Yeah, and maybe, since, maybe don't cosplay as that when you're walking around in public. Yeah, but, you know, I still bust out my bandages and cosplay as Darkman from time to time. So, yeah. Um, But, yeah, so that is a thing. And guess what? That is time. Yeah, man. That is time. That is our show. I want to thank you for showing up. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm, check out City I'm, Mist. I'm excited about that. That sounds yeah, like a really yeah. cool game. So that that is a thing. Um. Again, I went through some tablet drama. So I have a new tablet. I can mm-hmm. read it, and I keep buying this stuff on PDF now, so that I can look at it through the tablet. Yeah. And I'm only I only have to carry one device for yep. my library, because I don't like reading on phones. I already wear glasses. Yeah. And Agreed. when I read on a phone, I can read on a phone. But then as soon as I look up from the phone, 
Yeah, I crashed the car. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't read while driving, but when I do look up from the phone, the rest of the world is out of focus, mm-hmm. and I just don't like having to adjust like that. So. Yeah, no, I I, uh, I use my phone for notes when I'm like doing a, a game. I'll have like my like a bullet point note thing on there. I just mm-hmm. kind of scan over that. But yeah, reading an actual book on my phone, nah, nah. Yeah. Yeah, I, that, I ain't that's... trying to live that kind of life. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, so I want to thank you for showing up. Yeah, um, thanks for shout me. out to Johnny D and D for running a really good D and D game last week. That was, that was a fun thing that I got to sit in on. Good, um, good. Yeah, you know, just talking to the dude. Um, and we're working out, um, we're working out some more stuff for the community center work. Um, that's that's becoming a thing, and I'm really looking forward to that thing. Um, becoming as it were so with that i'm gonna say you know thank you for showing up um Mm -hmm. you know i'm gonna be really really sad really sad um when i lose you over over the fair season i'll be back don't worry you can't keep me away so i'll uh, start wandering back over here after my (laughs) five week absence and uh, yeah and of course i gotta give a shout out to the deck mob in np city thank you guys for um, you know, communicating and talking with each other and all that stuff. Yeah. You know. So if you guys, if you guys that are listening and all that stuff want to get a hold of us or more to the point, if you want to be part of our crew and look at all this stuff, then the only thing you have to do to be a real decker is to talk to us. Um or more to the point, if you want to be a real decker, you know, if you want to seriously show what you're up to on back the in the down. deck, you know, then that's fine. All you have to do is contact us at backinthedeck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. You can also check out the archive over on YouTube. Just look for BidP or Back in the Deck or hashtag BidP. Um, follow us on Twitter at Back in the Deck. Are you sensing a theme here? <laughs> um, and of course, if you are sensing a theme, then we're just going to break that up completely by saying join up on the Facebook group on Deckers on the Book. That is our Facebook group where we talk about the stuff we're going, we're doing, you get announcements of when we're going up, um, what we're talking about, the things that we're building and the games that we're playing. Um, let us know how you feel about the SoundCloud thing. Um, I really want to keep going going SoundCloud or some kind of audio version that people that don't join our Patreon um, can download and listen to for free for them forever because I don't want to keep anybody out, especially not the poor because <laughs> I'm a POC and poor. Hello, intersectionality. Um, and of course, follow us over on the Instagram now. Um, since we're talking about a few other things on that front, um, feel free, if you like what we do, to hit us up on Patreon, where for as little as tiny, 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 tiny amount as a dollar a month, you can check out our archive, you can look at our stuff over and over again, um, I do live discussions on Patreon for our patrons, we got polls, and of course, you guys get to help us decide what each show is going to be about if you join i believe the ten dollar tiers or higher but just as low for a dollar a month you have access to the patreon only content our content um and polls to help us decide what we're going to do and you help keep the door open as you can see we're up to five patrons now so we're climbing um and with that i'm gonna say once again, thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for being our friends. And of course, thank you for playing and hanging out with us. And remember, if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like or have the hobbies that you like because of your race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual preference, your disability, or your budget, you just tell them to take those cards and put them back on the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, along with Dick Duggernaut, saying thank you guys for showing up, and we will see you next time on